during the golden years of 2019, where the world didn't have to deal with a global pandemic, a great game was released for the Nintendo Switch. This game was a game that took a beloved series to a new direction, a great art style, and created a generally fun game. This was the year we got the critically acclaimed title, Luigi's Mansion 3. Mario. Ooh, and I guess a game called Fire Emblem Three Houses launched around that as well. The point is, it's been two years since the last game launched, and so we are entering 2022. And, as weird as it sounds, if we don't get a new game by 2022, we'll be entering the biggest hiatus in the history of Fire Emblem. Three years without a game is, surprisingly, unheard of. Everyone is excited for the future. You are excited for the future. You are, right? And, as you probably know, we had no announcements of anything Fire Emblem related in the past directs. Does that mean that the series is dead for good and will never see the light of day again? No, of course not. This doesn't even mean we are not getting a new game next year. After all, Shots of Valencia was announced a whole 4 months before its release. But this left me thinking, however. What do we even have in store for the future of Fire Emblem? Of course, a new entry in the series, but is that all? I believe we can go further than just this. The future of Fire Emblem on the Switch can be just composed of a 17th game or a remake. No, 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 we can think bigger. And that's what we will be seeing here today. Well, but as much as we can think big, we should begin with the obvious. Yes, a new title, the mythical, legendary, highly anticipated Fire Emblem 17. But assuming it's a new game, what would even be this mysterious Fire Emblem 17? To respond to that question, we need to take a little look into the past. If there's one thing intelligent systems like doing, is taking things that worked in the past and just recycling it somehow. And one of the biggest things they have from the recent games is the hub. Three Houses had this hub in the form of Garak Mac Monastery. It's a playable area where you can explore, interact with many characters, eat, sing, and do a lot of things between maps and battles, essentially making the game feel more lively. I'm not saying that the monastery is perfect and that you should just return as is with a new coat of paint. Far from that. In fact, the monastery is probably the most criticized part of Three Houses. The repetitivity, the fact that the place itself didn't change much, and being forced to go through the same things over and over again were all points of heavy criticism. However, I do believe, at least I hope, that Intelligent Systems is able to improve on criticism, and if they improve on these points, we could have a great hub in the next team driven series. We could also have a sequel to an old title, or something like Awakening did, set 2000 years after the Marth games. However, since then, Fire Emblem hasn't been keen on revisiting old worlds, aside from remakes, so it personally bet on another new world. I would, however, like to see the lore being expanded a little on a nude setting. There is also the point of a root split. Fates did that, albeit you needed to pay for each root, and Treehouse expanded on it. Since it might be sticking around, one complaint people had with Three Houses Root Split is that some were too similar, like Verdun Wing and Silver Zone. Maybe in this future game, instead of picking an actual root at the beginning, we could see something more like split paths and make your choices matter more? Something like your decisions taking you to different paths and endings instead of choosing your fate in Chapter 2. At the very least, it would add to the replayability. And uh, maybe we'll see child units again? I mean, they were pretty popular. Maybe if they make sense in the story, and not something forced like the microwave dimension once again. 30 seconds in the box, and a new child is ready to fight. But, well, enough talking about a completely new entry. Speaking of which, we can also discuss another type of entry. Older entries.
the remake possibility is always discussed around. Actually, maybe more than the new entry itself. But it's not baseless. In fact, rumors that another remake had been planned for the 3DS and gen developer for the Switch have been around for years. The most discussed one is, obviously, Gen Knowledge of the Holy War. I mean, it makes sense. The first three games have remakes already, so the fourth should be the next one. Gen Knowledge would also make a lot of sense. In fact, the game greatly inspired Treehouse itself. The whole similarities between Crests and Holy Blood, the legendary weapons, the story, they isn't just afraid of going hard on more serious and political tones. Gen Knowledge would also benefit a lot from a remake. The game didn't age as badly as the NES game, but the story, albeit good, is a bit hard to follow from time to time, due to the SNES limits. That could and should be improved in the new version. Besides, a modern approach on supports would also do wonders for the game, especially with the focus on marriage in the first part of the journey. Duke Draw is also the only continent in Fire Emblem that has no games localized for the West, so that would be a wonderful idea to introduce this wonderful world to a lot of new people. Even if Shadow of Valentia didn't sell well. Regardless, Alm and Selicate won the Chooser Legends. Shadow of Valentia did wonders to guide his characters overall. God knows the guiding barely had any characterization at all for a part of the cast. Besides, coming on against the hub idea. In the knowledge of the Holy War, at the beginning of each chapter, you're positioned in a castle, where you can buy things, interact a little, check statues, and fight into the arena. That's essentially perfect for something like Garak Mac. Maybe we could go even further and make each castle different, with unique things? There are a lot of possibilities. Another game that's high on the priority list of remakes is Biting Blade, the sixth game in the series. Released in 2002 for the Game Boy Advance, the game did not age badly at all, in fact, it aged way better than Genealogy and Tracio. However, in an interview in 2017 with Kinko Nakanishi, director of Shadows of Valentia, he said that if he had the opportunity to remake another game, he said he would actually remake Binding Blade. And it's not a bad idea. Sure, the game stands up well today, but the support system is a bit outdated. After all, it was the first proper implementation it had, and some characters could be a bit more fleshed out. Besides, Roy is very popular in the West, thanks to Smash Bros, but his game has yet to see the light of day in this part of the globe. Hell, Roy won second place in the first Chooser Legends without even existing here. Lots of people would love to see his game finally shine in the glory of an official translation. Also, that's on me, but if you're going to remake Binding Blade, please, please give me a playable Guinevere in the main story. She deserves it. Other games could be remade, like Trace itself, Blazing Blade, but speaking of which, maybe we could have something else in mind for the newer ones. Instead of remaking a game outright, we could get simple parts of older games. Heaven knows that the Radiance games are insanely hard to get nowadays for a decent price, because of their absurd rarity. Like the endless rumors of a Metroid Prime Trilogy port on the Switch, the existence of a Radiance Duology port would make a lot of people happy. Although I wish they would work on some changes as minimal as they are, just a tiny little bit. Please, please, for the love of Ashonira, add support to Radiant Dawn, actual support. Another game that was previously rumored to be part was Fates itself, like a definitive version without the three roots. Not impossible, and although a special version already exists, it's almost as rare to get as Italian's games. This rumor was more lively before Three House was announced, so now that the Fate spotlight has started to fade, I find this one a little unlikely. Or maybe we can get a part of the older games? In fact, the first ever Fire Emblem was ported to the Switch getting a translation for the first time in history. Maybe this could be a pattern. Maybe it could... Uh, be getting guided and translated and ported next? God, that's quite a scary tough. Tough, well, Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light wasn't the only Fire Emblem ported to the Nintendo Switch. We had another one, the port of Tokyo Mirage Sessions, coming directly from the Wii U. And speaking of which... Maybe uh, a new Tokyo Mirage Sessions? 
I mean, yes, the first TMS didn't sell well. Encore's sales numbers weren't ever disclosed, but the sales on the first week seemed to be weaker than the Wii U version. According to VG Charts, the original game sold 300,000 units, which is more than Trace and New Mystery, at the very least. Besides, the game was portable, which could mean they're testing the waters for a new entry. A new entry could even improve on the popularity by it. Instead of using a weak and shadow dragon units, using three houses ones. After all, three houses is the hot stuff nowadays. Why not? Imagine if the protagonist or the main villain had an Edelgard Mirage or something. Tokyo Mirage Sessions was a bit of fresh, silly air in the series that was completely absurd, but great in its own little way. And the popularity of the game seems to be weirdly increasing over time. I mean, considering Heroes and Choose Your Legends, the four most voted characters that are not playable are all from TMS, which must mean something. Actually, and speaking of spin-offs... Another Warriors game! That's not completely out of the question. I think. I mean... Hyrule Warriors got a new game, and Fire Emblem Warriors sold more than a million units. That's a lot. In fact, it makes Warriors the fourth best-selling game in the franchise. The Warriors game could go on two possible routes. The first is doing the mix of a lot of words once again, but hopefully this time with a better cast. I mean, Ike, of all people, was the part of the first one. Ike. Let's not even forget that Azura, the face of Fire Emblem Fates, was somehow a DLC character that didn't even appear in the base game. Oboro, of all people, appeared in the base game. Seriously, what even was the roster? The other is to follow the Age of Calamity or Persona Strikers route, and that is a kind of prequel or sequel to a game. It worked genuinely well for both these games, expanding the lore and developing the characters even more and it could work great for any game in the series. The obvious choice, however, is the most recent and popular one, Three Houses. A sequel would be complicated, given the multiple roots nature of the game, but a prequel, like Breath of the Wild did, could be great, expanding on previous conflicts the game tells us about. Imagine the possibility of living and playing through the tragedy of Duster, or even the fight of Nemesis with ten elites against Cyrus. The possibilities are endless! I mean, I'm not the one responsible for coming up with these ideas, so I might as well just say they're endless. After all, it worked well for Zelda and Persona. And speaking of Zelda... The Switch has been some sort of renaissance for a lot of games. Zelda itself getting a large, free, explorable world in Breath of the Wild. Mario getting a large explorable world full of collectibles in Odyssey, Pokemon in Arceus, Kirby in Forgotten Land, you get a pattern. Well, why not bring this to Fire Emblem? In fact, this would not even be the first time this idea was even attempted. Fire Emblem Wii, a prototype developed after Region Down, had the idea of having a free roaming world map with dungeons. Of course, that would diverge greatly from what Fire Emblem is exactly, so maybe a spin-off with that would work just fine. As for what? Well, we have the perfect story for an adventure again. Have ever heard of Marth, the hero king of legend, who, with the help of his many allies, overcame his challenge and defeated the Shadow Dragon twice? Well, guess what? He's a descendant of Unri, a demon legend who did all that and more without the help of any of these so-called allies. And we didn't need this puny, weakling, waste of time things called allies. And we was a powerhouse all by himself, and this spin off is the game that's going to show that. The so lonely journey of the greatest hero of all time. Marv? Never heard of. Garbage. Can't even straight up defeat a whole continent by himself. What is he? A fighting game character or something? Oh, wait. Speaking of fighting games. This one has been long overdue. People have been asking this for ages and it has so much potential. The Smash community has been joking around that Smash is almost a Fire Emblem game for ages now, so we just need to go the extra mile. 
work for Persona. After all, Persona 4 Arena and Ultimax are reality and really fun games. And it's not just Persona, a lot of games have their own fighting games counterparts. We have, for example, Pokémon Tournaments, which still have a quite active competitive scene and good sales. Fire Emblem has an amazing cast with the most diverse weapons, it's the perfect recipe for a fighting game. Swords, lands, axes, bows, tongues, staves, beasts, so many possibilities. And somehow Smash keeps giving everyone a goddamn sword. Sakurai, can you please? I mean, just imagine the possibilities. An all-out fight between Hector and Mikaya. It could be a traditional fighting game, a platform fighting game, a 3D fighting game, doesn't matter. The point is that there is a demand and examples that did well in the past. Once again, like Persona, Pokemon, hell, even Marvel and Capcom. And once again, speaking of Persona... I mean, it works? Fire Emblem games have been praised to hell and back for their great soundtrack. And let me tell you, if I can have you Naruka on my screen dancing just past this, there is no reason why I shouldn't have Cloud showing dance moves to the sound of God Shattering Star. Certainly Joe's user would be up to that. Perhaps you could have some more voice to original songs for that? I mean, there are some already, but how will the available voice tracks come from Tokyo Mirage sessions? Not that I would mind dancing to But then we'd have a licensing problem with Atlas. Right now, we could at least have something already the Flower of Ice or one of the 20 variations of Lost in Tofts of Alone. If anything, the end of the year April Fool's video might be a beginning to that. We might only hope. But we might not have ripped off her soon enough. Speaking of which... Persona Q is a fun spin-off where all the heroes and party members from Persona 3 and beyond come together in a single title. This game makes the player able to control all the beloved cards in the franchise, like a lover letter to the- Oh wait, that, that's, that's Fire Emblem Heroes already. Uh, never mind, let's stop stealing from Persona, right? Why not? I mean, come on, every damn franchise and their dog have a racing spin off already. Mario, Sonic, Crash, Final Fantasy, Garfield, El Chavo. Even Heavy from TF2 is a goddamn car, but no sign of eye candy anywhere. And let me tell you, if Diddy Kong can call his friends to battle in the name of speed, what does stop Marth from doing the same? And don't even get started in the little technicalities like cards it makes just back in the medieval ages, because Link is riding a fucking motorcycle in Mario Kart Age. In fact, the motorcycle got so popular that it ended up in Breath of the Wild. Where is my game with Chrome riding a motorcycle? Cowards, intelligent systems! All of you are cowards! Alright, alright, this is not working. I need something new. What, what, are, what are the best selling games of all time again? What's that? Minecraft? Maybe this king? No, no, never mind. No, no. Grand Theft Auto? Too modern, too violent, no, no bugs are going to be mad. Tetris? What? No, no, maybe if we steal a page from Dr. Mario, but no, no, that's not going to work. Hmm, maybe. Sports! That's the solution right here! Imagine! Imagine a third game of Wii Sports, like the tennis game, but instead of an ugly, big-headed character hitting the ball with a racket, you have instead Hector slamming the ball into oblivion with armaments. It's perfect, and it blows my mind how nobody has ever thought of this before. Choose between Balfus and Charlotte in boxing matches. Lance-wielding characters can play baseball with their weapons, it's straight up a bat. And golf! Uh, nobody cares about golf. This is the true and endless possibilities, because, after all, there are endless sports in the world. I don't know, Mikaya mountain biking, Xander swimming, Joshua playing poker, go wild! Yes, that's the optimal solution, the one that will bring Fire Emblem to the heights platoon of gaming. This is... this is... this is... No, no, 
no, no, no, no, no, no. Who, who am I kidding? This will never work. If Nintendo didn't need a green light for even in Mario Kart, they'd never allow the series to touch a sports game. This leads me to believe that Fire Emblem is not well seen. Everything that a Fire Emblem character touches leads to death, sorrow and suffering. The only game they're remotely allowed is Smash, but the DLC for Smash is also over. Yes, there, there can only be one conclusion. Fire Emblem is dead. That's it, we are never getting any Fire Emblem game again. Because, god, if we didn't get a new game in the past direct, the series might as well just be dead. Shigeru Miyamoto certainly personally visited the intelligence system headquarters and gave the order. No more Fire Emblem. Certainly, he was disgusted by the nefarious route the series had taken. Romance. Too many characters. Overrepresentation in Smash. A story, gods! Miyamoto would never allow a game with a story to exist! Once he crossed the fate's boundaries of a terrible story, fate was sealed. Intelligent systems will forever now have to make Paper Mario and WarioWare, where they can develop a romance or, God forbid, a story. But it might be better this way, my friends. This is the path of light, of a new future. It's time to finally say goodbye to Fire Emblem and see new horizons. <sighs> not, not the Animal Crossing game, but it also works. <sighs> wait, 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 that's it! The Animal Crossing! A my castle game where you can decorate your castle, it's perfect, it's genius! Yes, that's a fever! Hello there! This is my first time making a long voiced video. English is not my main language, so this was quite hard. I would really appreciate any kind of feedback you may have, and thanks a million for watching. I hope you stick around to see more in the future. Thanks again and goodbye!